solubility, my kind of slight guide, this is a very much an oversimplification, but it works for this course. Solubility, like dissolves like. Okay. We've got two combinations of solute solvent that will lead to high solubility. The first possibility is if everything is nonpolar, the solute is nonpolar, the solvent is nonpolar. Okay. Nonpolar would be when you have London dispersion forces only. These are sometimes called hydrophobic substances, water fearing. They don't want to have anything to do with water. They they would be very low solubility in water. Okay. So let's take a look at that first bullet. Okay. Then I'll dive into the second possibility. And I'll color code this. So what what could we have as a combination of two nonpolar chemicals, a solute and a solvent, that has LDF only? Well, hopefully the first thing that comes to mind are all those hydrocarbons. C and H only will only have London dispersion forces. So we could have C7H16 as our solute. That has London dispersion forces only, and I could put that in C8H18. And that combination, solute in solvent, would be highly soluble. So that is a heptane in octane, key being LDF only. Now that is something a lot of, maybe your parents buy a lot. Does anybody know where you might be able to buy that combination? Costco does sell it. it. They're kind of one of the cheapest places to buy it. Okay. Gasoline. Okay, you buy it. You go buy. You go to Petro Canada, Esso, Shell. Okay, when you buy gasoline for your car, it's not only octane. Maybe you've you know gone to the pumps, octane, octane rating. It's a whole mixture. Okay. And when the gas comes out into your car, it's all very soluble. Okay? You don't have two layers coming out of the gas pump going into your car. So C7, C8, C9, C10, you know, anything sort of plus or minus one or two carbons around C8. Okay? Now you pay more at the gas pumps if you want uh, a more of a homo or more of a uniform solution. Okay? If you want to have more just octane and less of the others, you've got to pay for a higher blend of fuel. Okay. But that is what you might buy um, at the gas station. Okay. It's a mixture. Okay. So that's one possibility. Very high solubility. They can mix your gas in any ratio they want, and it's not going to form two layers. Homogeneous solution. The other possibility, the other extreme of the forces, is if everything can hydrogen bond. Now I'm going to pick my solvent as water. Water has London dispersion. It is dipole-dipole, and it's got two OHs. So water has hydrogen bonding. And I want you to think for a little bit, what family am I going to pick from that's going to be really soluble? What family has hydrogen bonding in it? There's only two options that I could be picking from. I'm going to pick from one of those two families. I'll even flip back in my notes to our second slide. And the bottom is where we had them. Alcohols and carboxylic acids have hydrogen bonding. So maybe I'll pick methanol. Or I'll pick another combination, ethanol. Ethanol is incredibly soluble in water. But there's a lot of rules around this bottom solution. The province of Alberta says you can't buy that solution unless you're 18. But there's an incredible variation of solubility. 
Okay. So I'm going to make some comments. I'm connecting STS outcomes. I'm not making any comments of whether you use any of these, but you could buy a beer, alcoholic beverage that is 5% ethanol in water. Okay. At the other extreme, which you need to be really careful with, you could buy some vodkas that are 80% the alcohol in 30% water. They're very soluble. You can mix them in any combination you want. Okay. Or you could go up to 85%. And do you know where you put the 85% stuff? In a vehicle and you drive a car around. Have you ever seen E85 on the back of a vehicle? That means that vehicle can take 85% ethanol and burn it in the engine and propel a vehicle forward. Uh, you could, in theory, drink 85% alcohol in water, not the stuff from the gas station because they might have put some stuff in that's toxic, but 85% alcohol, it's not going to take much to kill a human. Okay? You drink a liter of that stuff and you're probably not surviving. So you got to be really careful. Okay, but what we're talking about is solubility. Ethanol, incredible solubility of hydrogen bonding chemical in another hydrogen bonding chemical. Okay. So that's our solubility. Anything that doesn't fit here is going to have low solubility. So anything that has dipole dipole forces is not going to fit in either the blue or the red. You're going to have medium or low solubility. It will not be high. And the diploma will ask you what, you know, which of the following has high solubility. So that's solubility. Last, we're getting to the end, but we're also getting to the most important. Um, I'll jump right to fractional distillation. Okay. So again, this is on every diploma. Could be on your unit test. Why would I want to mimic the diploma? Okay. Huge part of the Alberta oil industry, doing fractional distillation to separate out hydrocarbons. Okay. The crude oil that comes out of the ground in Alberta is not ready to go right to the gas station to be sold. It's a humble jumbled mix. That's what's in the ground. It's nobody's fault. You've got to separate it out or distill it out so you can sell different products to different customers. Okay. Vehicles are specific. You can't put gasoline in a, in a diesel truck or diesel in a gas car. Or you can't take something that's half diesel, half gasoline, and put that into a, a diesel truck. It's not going to work. Fractional distillation is how the oil industry uh, separates things. Okay. Now, hydrocarbons. C and H is only, we just need to worry about London dispersion forces to separate out our hydrocarbons. Because the bigger the hydrocarbon gets, the more electrons it has, the higher the boiling point. So a C20 is going to have a way higher boiling point than a C2, an ethane or an ethene or an ethine. So what does one of these fractional distillation towers look like? So I'm going to start off with a tower. Okay. And the crude oil the mixture is going to come into the bottom. So oil in. Okay. Now it's really crude oil, crude being a mixture of whatever came out of the ground. Okay. That oil is probably going to get warmed up to, so it flows, but then there's going to be a heat source in our tower. And then as you go up the tower, it's going to keep getting cooler. And depending on the boiling point, you're going to boil everything at the bottom, but it's going to turn to a liquid at different points as you go up the tower. Okay. 
Now we're going to have some baffles. points where a liquid would fall down, get collected, and pulled out. Now, what is going to have the lowest boiling point in a mixture? Okay, What's going to stay a gas? Even if the temperature gets colder, what's going to have a boiling point low that it makes it to the top? A C20 or a C2? Which one would be, uh, would have the lower boiling point? So we're just thinking of London forces. The C2 is going to have less electrons. The C20 way more. So the C2 is going to have a lot lower boiling point. So as the temperature drops, it's going to stay a gas, and the gas is just going to rise up. So the lowest boiling points are going to go to the top. You know, your C1s to your maybe C3s. So you don't have to memorize these numbers, but the pattern is what you need to know. The lowest boiling points are going to go to the very top. Below that, you'll have another section. You can pump out slightly larger hydrocarbons. Maybe your C5s to C nines come out. Okay, and maybe you sell that layer off to uh, Petro Canada to sell as gasoline. Okay. As you go down the tower, you're going to keep getting higher London forces, larger compounds. Okay. So again, I'm just putting in sort of making up some rough numbers but the pattern is smallest hydrocarbons at the top with the lowest boiling point, and the boiling points are going up as you go down the tower. The hydrocarbons are getting bigger and bigger. Okay. At the very bottom, you would get things that don't even uh, boil. Okay. Your tars, asphalt, that's going to be sent to roads or companies to make shingles. Okay, that's not going to go up at all. Your tars are going to go in and then just flow right out. They might turn from a solid to a liquid with the heating, but never go up. Okay. What is typically asked on a diploma is rank some chemicals of which is going to come out highest in a tower or lowest in a tower. Highest in the tower is our lowest boiling points, lowest in the tower is the highest. It's kind of opposite. Low boiling points at the top. Okay. High boiling points at the bottom. Okay. Okay. And these are fairly large towers. They may be two, three, four stories tall. They're not something that's going to fit in a lab easily. Okay. So make sure you remember this slide. You know the order. Uh, I'm not the best artist. So just in your notes, I stole a graphic. And it's sort of a nicer version of what I drew. But it's the same theme. Low boiling points at the top, bigger, uh, higher boiling points at the bottom. So that is solubility and fractional distillation.